are live. Welcome, uh, welcome, folks, to a Wednesday night, Wednesday night tech enthusiasm live stream. I have a very special guest that I'll be bringing in um, in just a moment. We're going to basically spend tonight talking about amplifiers, home theater, AV, <clears throat> um, hi-fi amplifiers, specifically Class Ds. And so I'm very happy uh, to welcome Dylan from Buckeye Amps to the stream to the channel. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so, it's nice to be here. Yep. Yeah, um, super, super appreciate uh, you know you, you joining uh, tonight. <clears throat> your, your amps, uh, Class D amps, and the Buckeye amps in particular has been something that I've been researching quite heavily for the last several months. And so um, a little while back, actually, we kind of corresponded with some emails and um, mentioned maybe um, you know discussing. Uh, having you on and talking about your products and all that, and so um, getting getting closer to maybe pulling uh, pulling a purchase on uh, some swap outs for my pair of sounds. We'll get into kind of all the all the backstory and all that tonight. So, um, but yeah, thanks again for for joining oh, no. us. No, I, it's nice. This is my first. I have a, another stream, a couple other ones coming up, but that's me trying to get in the community. And uh, I've, as some people know, um, I'm usually always active on the major forums but that's behind a keyboard so mm -hmm. um you know two and a half years later it's nice to kind of finally start getting out there and let people see and talk to me and then any questions they have or anything i can help with is uh always while i'm here um being the owner operator the sole person uh i know all the ins and outs obviously so um i'm not just the face of the company i'm the the worker and assembly of the company too so yeah. got mm -hmm. all the bases yeah. covered Good. <clears throat> um, so as folks filter in, um, it's a couple of things to mention. I apologize in advance for my any throat clearing or sniffling that I'm doing. Allergies just have absolutely waylaid me in this last week. I, I can't believe I, I'm, I'm, I'm happily impressed that I made it so far into the spring, but like mid mid last week. So I'm I'm itching and and all of that. Um, but but we're still here. Um, and of course, if anybody has questions, um, please post them in the chat. Um, of course, give a, um, you know, give a shout out as you're coming in. Let me know who's out there. I've already seen some, some of the channel regulars there, Julius, uh, and Ren welcome guys. Um, but give a shout out, let me know. And again, if you have questions, questions for Dylan, questions about his products, any of that, put it in the chat. We'll, we'll try to get to everything as always as well. If you do so with a super chat, a super thanks it, that is greatly appreciated as well, but not required. Um, so let's go right in. So Dylan, tell us about yourself. How, <clears throat> what's your journey? How did, how did you get to founding an amplifier company? So, um, and a lot of, I just finished, uh, in the winter, my PhD. And when I first started the company, a lot of people knew I was working on it. Um, but what's funny is they would always say, they always figure is in electronics or something. It was actually in immunology. My journey mm -hmm. in life was always a medical field science. Um, but I started the AV hobby back in 2009 and I started on AVS forums like a lot of people did and, and learned a lot. You know, I was first, I was one of those people who when I first started didn't know what speaker cable, like which, what gauge did I need or do I need to pay more for, you know, monster stuff like that. Um, and then I've always been kind of tinkering always with my setup, with getting things going right. Uh, and then when the pandemic hit, um, we were out of our lab for about two months in quarantine and I had a little extra time to say, all right, I'm going to redo my, my home setup, you know, the best way I can. And at that, up to that point, I had been, maybe some people out there listening, they've gone through this where I, I had jumped around between a lot of amps over the last, up to that point, over 11 years at that point, um, from statement anthems to, you know, just some easygoing outlaws, emotiva. Um, at one point had a parasound, a sunfire and they didn't, it's not that they, all of them sounded different. It's just, I don't know how to explain it. It just, I never found one that worked with my setup. Um, the way like, cause I listen loud. I, when I watch a movie, it's reference. Um, okay. so I just, I'd never found something that I truly liked, or if I did, it was hard to justify the cost. So the, the one that I, I found right before quarantine was, um, ATI has their Hypex version, their uh, version of Class D using Hypex modules, but it's an arm and a leg. Um, it costs a lot because they kind of custom build theirs a little bit. 
and it I picked one up used. I loved it, but I was like, all right, this is this is pretty expensive. Um, I wonder if I can do this, like do a DIY build and get the same sound. So during quarantine, I did. I built my first Hypex amps on my own and put them in my setup. And they were phenomenal. They they matched the ATI. They sounded great. And the more I listened to them and the more I realized like how much the cost was for me just to do them. And one of the reasons why I ended up going that route is because there was only one other major company in the U.S. at the time that builds them. Um, and I just thought it kind of not that it's so much easy building them, but how good the sound was, but also seeing how much other people charge for it. Now, knowing when I had built my own that, oh, no, you can that's an arm and a leg more people are charging for something that is a kind of a simple build that if you do it right, sounds great. So mm -hmm. I sat down and I thought, is there, a, when I originally started this, I thought, is there a way I can bring a kind of a DIY build of these amps to the community to get another source for uh, American customers, you know, North American customers. So when I first started, I, I just thought I'd be doing maybe six or seven custom builds a month, you know, uh, really for the community. And by, I started in October, 2020 and by about February, 2021, just from word of mouth, I was getting um, five to six orders a week, which at the time, nice now job. looking back, doesn't seem like a lot, but at the time was, and it just kept building and people loved it. I was always open on um, audio science forums, uh, sorry, uh, audio science review. I was always open to answer feedback, to mm -hmm. let people pair down my products. Um, part of the community and the word of mouth just spread so much that it just kept gaining momentum. And it, it turned into, as I was finishing my PhD, I realized, no, I want to, I have my PhD there and, you know, someday I want to maybe incorporate it in a part-time because I do like science in that regard, but mm -hmm. I decided I want to go full-time with my business. And that's what I've been, that's why I'm here now um, on this, which is great uh, talking with the community um, why I'm going to be going to conventions when I can and kind of just getting out there more, um, advertising more and just going from just word of mouth to, Hey, this isn't the one, the one knock I had when I first started is if people would, you know, it'd be five months after the business started, someone would buy my product and go on AVS and say, Hey, if you look for an amp, buck I amps. And a lot of the times when I first started, one of the negatives I would get is people be like, Oh, well, that's just some guy building amps in his apartment. And now that I've grown this much, I try and I remember that and think, well, I am just some guy, but now people can see what I'm trying to do and what yeah. the company is. And, and now yeah. most people say, oh, well, that's Dylan. He builds Buckeye Amps. And they, it's kind of the same regard as, you know, a lot of the companies that are staples now really started with one or two people at most. Um, sure. Yep. But no, it's been fantastic. And I love it that, yeah, this is my full-time job now. Um, I'm not going anywhere and the company isn't. And uh, there's some exciting things coming up that, like I said, I'm not just sitting still and all right, module, new modules come out. Here's new amps. Mm -hmm. um, I won't, I'm, I'll tease a little bit, but we do have a new product we're working on. Um, me and a collaborator that helps me that is taking us past just an amplifier that I think the community will Ooh. really love. So um once we have more on that, I'd love to, I mean, if I come back on at some oh, point, sure. uh, some people can probably guess what it is, but that it goes to show that, yeah, we're this, this isn't just someone putting amps together and throwing a label on them. We're trying to grow um, rightfully so to reach as many customers as we can. We're, oh, that's awesome. And, and I will say this new product, um, as some people have followed, the case will be nicer looking. That is one thing I get from a lot of people is as part of the, the, uh, not cost cutting, but as part of the um, low prices, we don't spend as much on just the case. So we've always kind of had people say, uh, hey, I'd love to buy your amps, but you know, that case, it's a little, eh, I wouldn't want to show it off. Well, the new product, um, once I fully release it and let you guys know what it is, but it's one that people usually tend do to put out and allow, allow like they want to show off. And trust me, that'll be a, uh, That'll be a, a lot better looking than what we have now. It doesn't affect performance, but it is one thing I've kind of finally given into with the community is getting the looks a little better. Yeah. Um, but performance wise, like I've always said, and that's what a lot of people who have bought and loved my amps is they kind of come to the defense of, I mean, you're paying less money and 
nine times out of 10 people are putting these in a rack mount or just on a, yep. on a Navy shelf, especially for home theater builders um, that want those six or eight channels. So you're mm -hmm. getting the same performance for less money. That's, that's yeah. kind of that. And that's what we're always striving for. I'm never, uh, I mean, even the last price hike for um, the Hypex modules for kind of inflation and everything going on was in August. And we chose to just keep our prices the same and eat the cost because we're always trying to just stay at a um, a nice price performance and kind of a nice range for the community. So perfect. Yeah, I think the um, I, I think the sentiment that you build, you know, the word of mouth and like the just the pedigree of the brand has, has really locked itself in very strong. I know as I've, as I've had the channel for a little while and I've talked through deciding to move from Emotiva to the Parasounds that I have, and then actually spent a little while um, tracking down some buzzing issues and some other integration challenges that I think I've, I've basically attributed to the, to the A52 pluses constantly in the comments um, as well as, as having mentioning class D and considering class D, was recommendations to like, um, you know, to, to give all of your, your product, uh, essentially give it a look. Um, I don't spend as much time on ABS forum and, and such anymore, but I, like, I definitely see the brand getting mentioned quite, quite more often. Um, it, it got mentioned enough that actually it, there was ABS finally, I didn't even ask them. I, I pay yearly to be a business on there. So a lot of when I respond is that's part of me, like, uh, in the official threads someone made for our aunt, my amps, um, I'd like to respond to people if, if they have questions or anything. It's it you, it's weird. Some people have to get used to it, but it could be 1130 at night. And if I'm just kind of laying down, relaxing, you might see me, the owner of Buckeye, responding to your questions or helping you. Um, I don't know if helping you with deciding even at up to midnight or if I wake up in the middle of the night. But it's the word of mouth has been so strong that AVS actually reached out to me. Um, we had and kind of had a meeting because they're like, hey, we noticed your product really picking up, um, you know, mentions and and clicks on our website. And they um, wanted my first opportunity for advertising, um, probably coming up with that. Oh, so awesome. I guess that's it was community. Again, this I always think the community because without them, I don't know if it would have gotten this big because the word of mouth just kind of spread quickly got it yep so let's go over kind of what the the staple of your your builds are um right what you you offer basically kind of a choice of two essentially you know two brands of the class d's you've got yeah. some different combinations um different channel counts and things you want to give kind of a the an overview of the line essentially yeah so the two major brands we use are purify and hypex so Hypex, um, we now have two lines of them. The first is Encore, and that was the original. When you think of Class D, um, one thing that that really is still kind of out there that we're that the whole community is trying to remind people of, even if you don't buy from me, um, I'll, there's still some people that think of Class D either as only for car audio amplifiers from back in the day, or if they tried Class D before about 2015, chances are it was older Ice Power or older Crowns mm -hmm. that. They had high noise floor. So it was this new technology of here's all this power, but um, at a cost of you, a lot of people be like, well, now I hear hits in my speakers and the noise floor is really high. So it didn't get popular except for maybe some ultra expensive home theater builds where they could pay for like the higher up crowns. Mm -hmm. And then Hypex, and part of that was Hypex is before Encore, they had the UCD line, which was a little better. Keep They were striving to bring the noise floor down. And then with their Encore line, um, their original Encore, that was kind of the shift. That was when Class D was like, oh, wait, here's these, You all their Encore line are these ultra low noise floor. There's distortion measurements of above um, negative 100 decibels or more. There's measuring off the charts. Like they're, they're performing well, they sound great, and they measure awesome. And that's when people would start doing, when it, when it, kind of the blind AB testing started where people are like, all right, well, I can't hear the difference now between these N cores and this class AB I could swear by for the last 20 years. Um, and it was Bruno Putzi who he, he helped develop the N core line at Hypex. And then he left and started Purify and developed the Purify module. So I have their 
two of their modules. They're under the same line, basically. One's a lower power, one's a higher power. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of the next iteration of Class D was the Purify modules, just a little better than the Encore Hypex. Um, they're really no, the, the most you'll notice is if you do two, two channel, three channel, like critical listening, if you put a original Encore Hypex, so that's my, on my website, the, and the original Encores are the MP series ones you find. It's an all in one module. Um, so if you kind of do a, a, uh, blind AB or, a AB testing of the pure five versus the original Encore, I tell people, if you're a critical listener for two channel, you know your soundtracks in and out. You know how things should sound. You're going to hear a difference. Hmm. But then Hypex, after Purify came out with like their their line, um, which was kind of the next iteration for the Class D technology, just recently, and I'm just now about to start shipping the first orders, Hypex came out with their Encore X. So it's their next iteration of Encore. Um, this is them basically finally designing kind of a little bit from the ground up their new line of class D to compete with Purify. Now this is where it starts getting into splitting hairs. If you look at the measurements, the pure measurements of the Purify modules and the pure measurements of the um, Encore X Hypex modules, almost dead ringers. So it kind of gets hard. If you go to my, if you look at my website, a one, a monoblock or a two channel Purify or Encore X are the same price. So I get a lot of people saying, well, which one should I get? And I, I yeah. literally tell them, I said, it's, it's six of one, half dozen of another. You're going to get the same sound, the same performance. Um, there's a little bit like the Purify has been around a little longer, if that means something to somebody. Um, the Hypex does have the option of using their onboard buffer that comes with it, which might get you one decibel better for distortion, um, but it does match up better if you're doing a mix and match, say you're doing... You want to have the best amp for your front three channels, and then you have 11 other channels to amplify, then you could get by with just doing the older uh, Encore Hypex. Mm -hmm. So the Encore X does match up a little better gain-wise to that setup. But other than that, they sound identical, and they perform identical. Okay. And they almost look identical. That's the other thing. If you look mm -hmm. at the... it, that's kind, of, that's kind of where we're getting is it's... We call it kind of chasing... Uh, distortion numbers now. You're, we're at levels with the Purify and the Encore X where audibly you can't hear the distortion. It's that low. Um, but now it's kind of who can really take the lowest that soon Purify, they just showed it at Munich High End, Purify has their next generation. Um, so it's, it's I, I say next generation, they're calling it their evolution of their Egan Tact, which is what the Purify is called now, their mm -hmm. technology. But their next one is um, was just shown at Munich, which is even more power than what they have. And it's supposed to be even lower distortion than the Encore X. So it's, that's what I'm saying. I have to remind customers when they come to me like, oh, I hear this new module is coming out. And I have to say, well, what, what are you running? Because this new <laughs> module is 1,500 watts into two ohms. Do you need that? Well, no, my speakers are eight ohms. You don't need to wait on it then. You don't need to pay more for it. That's the other thing I try and do with, with my business is I'm not going to make I'm not going to try and sell people to spend more money on something they don't need. Um, so I always try and give fair objective. If someone asks in an email, Hey, what do you recommend? You might not have, the only thing I would say is if you want the best for your front three channels, purify, but otherwise if you're running just home theater, you could get by with the N the two five twos or the five zero two MPs. Um, so much so that I try to be objective that I've never, uh, I've never given in yet to building five or seven channel Purify amps for home theater because that's, uh, to be frank, it's people's money to spend, but that's a waste yeah. of money. If you, okay. there's no reason to use Purify or Encore X on your surround speakers, for instance, mm -hmm. you're not going to hear that. Um, so that's what I try and be for my customers is not upsell them just to get more money. That's the other thing I try and do for this business. Yeah. yeah these modules are, are hitting it's like pretty solid power levels. Even the NCXs are at 380 watt into eight ohm. Eight ohm, yeah, and then 700 watt for four ohm. Yeah, and then yeah. you have the 7040 Purify, which is 950 watts two ohm. Um, it's only four, only 450 four ohm. But uh, that one, I do. When people ask about the 7040, that's the one to get if you have really hard to drive speakers. That module, now that we have the new micro audio power supply with it, 
I, that's the one I recommend. I mean, one of my integrators I work with a lot and we, um, we definitely um, back and forth have talked a lot and kind of close in terms of what he sells for me and how uh, advice he offers. But he has speakers that can get down to a little under one ohm. And he has, he, he has, I forget what amps he was running, but they were the only ones he ever found that kind of could drive them. And then I got him um, three of the monoblock 7040s and just upgraded one of his with the new power supply. I still have to do two more, but he said when he, he plugged them in, they were just as good or possibly even better than the setup. He's always run with them. Nice. Um, so yeah, so that module is out there for those who have really difficult to drive speakers, but for the most part, uh, for home theater, which I'm sure the vast majority of the crowd is, or most people are, um, the when you go to my site, if you look at the anything that ends in MP, the MP series, any of those would be perfect for home theater. But yes, yeah, so that's kind of like I said, you split it into Hypex, Purify. Um, Hypex has the two lines, the Encore and the Encore X. Purify has the one line with two different models and a new one eventually coming out, which I don't even have the price on yet, but I know it's going to be expensive. Um, and someday Purify keeps teasing it, but they might finally make their own power supplies as well. We'll see. So the 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 one Purify, the monoblock that you have up is the... Okay, so that, that's the 7040 V2. So the yeah. new the new new purify, like as you mentioned, isn't shipping, isn't shipping yet. Oh no, tough. they just showed that at Munich high end. Got it. That one is I don't even have the specs on it other than what was kind of confirmed with the um uh fifteen hundred watt two ohm, and I don't have it in front of me. I thought maybe seven hundred or nine hundred watt four ohm, something in there. Um, but that one's meant as kind of a, a again to drive some really high like really difficult speakers because it puts out about 40 amps for the the current so um that's when you start when people say you know what a difficult to drive speaker uh it's you got your wattage so I, that's where a lot of people your wattage is important but um out the current is also important so that's the other kind of distinction where if you look at the pure fire the encore x for example with the encore x you do get a little more current, so a little more amperage output that can be beneficial for some difficult to drive speakers. But um, like I said, by and large, most speakers on the market, you're fine with. It's really when you get into like the big ones that are benefit a lot from that are um, like the Magnapan, the Maggie's, um, electrostatic, stuff like that. Okay. Yep. And then you've got, of course, like you mentioned, a variety of different channel configurations. You've got... Um, standalone cases and rack mount options and other finishes yeah. and so on. So a lot, a lot of customization, right? Yeah. And that's been gaining. Um, I've been getting a lot more custom orders and I try and put pictures up if, as you see, as I can go of the different ones people get, uh, but they are pretty nice. I mean, there's some that wouldn't be what I get, but like the most recent one I did was the uh, um, yellow and black, which oh, okay. it looks, it looked, there's a picture up under the gallery. I think it, it to me, it looked cool not like my taste, but some of these people have been coming up with um, like someone right after that ordered it, a rack mount that's in the works right now. That's mostly yellow with just a black top. So it's kind of, uh, okay. you can get creative with that. If people want it just adds to it. If you do a custom order like that, it's usually about four weeks. Cause I don't keep those color combinations on hand, but um, it's been nice. Again, that's another thing that the case manufacturer I found while they might not look the best, just as a plain black case, they have a lot of options for customization that um, would have been difficult had I gone with kind of the more traditional ones that other competitors use where they only offer really silver or black. Mm -hmm. um, so they look nicer in that color, but this case manufacturer lets me really offer these options of uh, different anodizing colors and different powder coating colors and stuff like that. Nice. Yep. And that's all on the web page. And then I think it's worth mentioning as well, from a general connectivity perspective, pretty much ubiquitous. So your, your builds have RCA and XLR connections. You've got triggers and, and all the No, no, no RCA. So no RCA. that's one okay. thing I try and point out. Um, it, it started with, well, it's both of you, both Hypex and Purify will kind of tell you uh, their topology is, is balanced, but even though if your source is unbalanced, you're obviously not going to have a completely balanced signal chain, but they've always advised that if you're going from an unbalanced source, so an RCA to one of their amps to still use XLR input and use an RCA to XLR cable, not adapter, but an actual cable. Mm -hmm. It 
to, for them, and there's a actually a white paper kind of explanation Hypex even has on it, that's the best way to preserve as much of that balanced pathway as possible internal okay. versus offering RCA to RCA. Um, so I've always followed and made it simple that it, all my amps are XLR in and all you need is an RCA to XLR cable. Got it. <clears throat> um, and then auto sensing or, or, or trigger yeah. options are there as well. Yeah, the auto sensing we just added um, when we started building our input boards for Purify last year, we decided the person I'm working with um, who's been really helpful with all the, the kind of helping my business grow with these input boards and kind of getting things streamlined. Um, we added the auto sense. So uh, the only thing there is um, it's kind of like it, if most subwoofers have auto sense, so people kind of know how it works, mm -hmm. but ours we made, it's a little sensitive in that we didn't want it tripping. The The, the problem with the auto sense is uh, it can trip from a phantom signal. And there's actually um, one, it seems like the Lingdorf MP, 40, I think it is. I have a customer have, there's some sources that put out almost, even with it off, put out kind of a small phantom um, line level out, even in the XLRs. So yeah. we we had to make it sensitive enough that it trips at normal or lower volumes, but not too sensitive that it trips from a phantom signal. Um, so the only issue with the auto sense is if you're someone who puts on, let's say background music really low, there's a chance that during the low passage of the music, it could, um, if it's for more than 10 minutes, it could turn itself off. Um, simple thing is just turn the volume up. But that's the only thing I have to tell people is auto sense is it's great if you don't have a 12 volt trigger cable or capability, um, but it can be a little frustrating depending on your use case. Like if you're gonna use auto sense and put music almost, the way we calibrate it, for example, for people out there in the home theater is um, on a normal receiver, let's say a Denon, when you've calibrated it, I think um, if you go by the where zero decibel is reference, we calibrated our auto to trip at about negative 55 decibel, which is pretty low. I mean, for most of us yeah. who have done that before, that's like TVs on and you can kind of barely hear voices low. So yeah. you really have to have the, the volume, the background music or something like that low for it to trip itself off. So it's a little bit of give and take. Like I said, if we made it too sensitive, then you have an amp that's could be turning on and off at which is a small little random phantom spike from the source or whatever. Cool. And one of the other configurations maybe worth mentioning too. So what we were talking about um, when I, I was thinking of like what configuration would I was I considering? And my, my focus was on the li my living room setup first. I got the two focals in there. I got two in wall subwoofers, and I'd like to get those on a basically a four channel amplifier. But some of these, some of the newer modules, like the NCX module and the purifies, right? You can't, you need uh, basically du dual stereos or you need more more power to drive certain combinations. Yeah. Uh, so the, with, with the purify, the normal, the ET400A, we do up to three channels with, and this is going to sound weird, but we use hype. Everyone uses basically the Hypex power supplies because purify doesn't have their own. Um, so that makes a three channel easy. You get three purifies at four ohms maxed out or just a tad under 1300 Watts and a Hypex 1200 SMPS can do three 1350 Watts max. Okay. But when you do an NCX, which can do up to 700 Watts in four ohms, put two of them together and you're kind of just at the threshold of what the Hypex power supply can do. Um, so I, that's why I only offer at this moment, two channels with the Hypex power supply. So then it comes into, well, for every two channels, you're going to want a Hypex power supply. Um, which is why you can do just two, two channel builds if you have plenty of room for cases, but that's why, and what you and I talked about, I had a customer about two months ago who said, well, I just want one case. Can you fit? four channels in it. And I said, well, yeah, but it would be two separate power supplies. So it'd basically be two, two channels just in one case. And he was okay paying for the custom fee um, to make, uh, which he'll get it. I'm actually, once his build's done, he'll get a little bit of refund. Cause I did make five cases, which brought the price down per case a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I can offer it to other people such as you and I have talked about, yep. but it that's, that's the only way for him to do NCX. Or if I want to do purify more than, three channels, I'd have to come up with something like that. 
the caveat is if you go on my website, you see there's a pre-order for a three channel NCX, um, which three channels of NCX would draw about 2,100 Watts. So if you look at other competitors, what they end up doing and what, why let's say their three channel costs more than what mine's going to be is they go back to, all right, well, they just do one power supply per channel. So if they do offer a three channel, they're going to do um, one Hypex power supply for each one channel of the NCX, which costs more and it's kind of wasted power because that's you only, mm-hmm. you're paying more for power you're not going to use. So yeah. um, one thing that what I'm doing now, and you can I, it's under the, the info for the three channel NCX, but there's this company called Micro Audio who's been making power supplies for a while um, and they're very high quality power supplies. A lot of them, what he offers are tailored to the do-it-yourself market, but he also has some big um, contracts or work he does for um, higher end audio companies that order in a big minimum order quantity. Um, but I noticed that people were buying, that's that's who I also use for my version two, 7040 is micro audio. And that's how I came across him as I noticed people were saying in the do-it-yourself do, do community that they're his power supply can drive a 7040 module to full power, whereas a Hypex power supply can't. So I was like, all right, well, I want to offer this, ver- I want to drive my modules to full power. Well, then him and I got to talking and I asked him, I said, is there, do you offer a power supply about that could do two um, kilowatts of so 2000 two watts that I could do a three channel NCX build with? And he was, he said, well, no, but I have one in the drawing board. And after some talking, um, that's why I kind of, I advertise on my site is he, him and I are building, he's building for me specifically uh, a two kilowatt power supply that will do the three channel NCX full power. But is also um, since I'm helping paying for the, the prototyping and the testing and all that, it's going to be exclusive to Buckeye amps only. Um, and it was funny because after that, after I made that announcement kind of on the forums that, yeah, I have micro audio building me this awesome power supply to get my channel counts up. Um, for these amps, for just relying on one power supply, uh, the Sammy at Micro Audio said that there was some other competitors who wanted the same power supply, but since I paid ahead of time for it, mm-hmm. um, it's kind of up to me if I want to license it to them or not. Okay. But, but to kind of drill down why all that's important is um, the Micro Audio power supplies are, they're, they're newer. So the Hypex power supplies are tried and true. They work great. I've only ever had one fail that I've used for any of my builds in the last year and a half. Um, But they're a little outdated, so they don't have any power factor correction, which helps with efficiency. I know people who build computers kind of know how that plays into effect when you look at computer power supplies. So micro audios have active power factor correction. They have a lower, um, they have higher efficiency, so lower heat output. And they use a little bit better quality components, so they do cost a little more. Uh, But the trade-off is I get this incredible clean power um, and kind of a way to distinguish myself from other builders that, again, you look at a three channel from a competitor and you're going to be dealing with three separate power supplies, which are three power supplies, three chances that you have a failure, three chances that something could go wrong. Whereas now there's this micro audio one I'll have that's one power supply running the three, the three modules, um, better quality and less, less, uh, points of failure, so to say. And that's open to discussion where um, I'm also working to see if there's a chance to get uh, a power supply from him that's more encompassing for all of the market that one day maybe switching off the Hypex completely. So my purifies would be run off. All my purifies would be run off a of power supply of his and mm. uh, all my Hypex NCX. So um Again, things that when I first started, I never even knew about. I never thought were possible. I just kind of built them and yeah. was here for the community. And uh, in this last year, I've come across some helpful collaborators and some, like I said, micro audio, good business to uh, grow this line and directions that kind of differentiate it from others and make it better. Yeah. Yeah. That'll definitely be a sweet spot for, you know, for home theater with some big LCRs. Basically, you put your LCRs on that three channel. And then well, get the six yeah. or the eight or you know whatever other accompany accompanying amp. I was right, gonna say there, go I it. do know some people who use electrostatics for their LCR, so they could benefit from all this power. Mm-hmm. Um, 
No, and that's then the other thing is the same power supply um, will be enough to power two of the 7040s. So I can finally offer a two channel 7040. Um, but you'd be surprised how many people have come to me and asked for. I had someone just recently ask if I'd do a five channel 7040. I was like, that the, the power you need for that and the amount of power, like physically in a case that makes sense, I just can't fit that many power supplies. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing I have to stress, uh, uh, this was brought up. So these new version two 7040s, um, for a mono block case, they are rather bigger. But if you look at the pictures, that micro audio power supply is a lot beefier. It takes up a lot of room. Um, and the reason why I'm, I went that route and I kind of show on my page is I have to remind people when you're shopping around, that's, if you don't buy from us, it's fine. I always encourage shopping around if you find a better price. But what, at least for the 7040, like I try and stress is um, we're really the, there's only one other competitor on the market that can actually reach the full power output of the 7040. It's that person and us. So anyone, if you're looking at a build and you're looking to get the Purify 7040 and the manufacturer says they use a Hypex power supply, it won't reach its full power output. So you won't be getting your full power output. That's why we, one of the reasons we switched to micro audio was, hey, we have this high power output Purify module, but we're not able to hit the full specs. Um, so that's why that version two came out. But again, that's also why the trade-off is now you have a monoblock case that's bigger than I would like it to be. But again, you look at that power supply and it's it's a good, I'd say 50 to 60 millimeters wider or longer than the Hypex. It's, it's, uh, it's a nice piece of, uh, technology, nice piece of electronics. So awesome. All right. Well, let's roll through some comments and, and yeah, such. I saw starting up, um, as I paid attention, I, if I, if you want to, yep, I'll them pop up them up as we go here. There's, there's definitely some questions we'll hit. We got some channel regulars in here back from the beginning. Julius, um, Ren had a couple of questions. Uh, Ohioans pay sales tax. Um, uh, and, and they, yeah, and they I, fans. um, I, I am starting to charge sale tax in Ohio now. Um, I hope the IRS isn't watching, but when I first started, I was trying to be lenient with that. But uh, again, as now the business is has grown and to do everything right, yes, Ohio does pay sale tax. You can pick up in person, but you'll be disappointed. It's not like I have this big, nice storefront or I work out of my home. Um, so it's a home business. So you can absolutely drop by to pick them up. Um, I will have... Uh, at some point, I'm calling it my demo room. I am doing a theater build that if you pick them up, maybe if it's a good day, I could, when that's done, a customer could see it. Um, but yeah, there's there, shipping's free in the US. So there's no difference, even if you live two hours away to me shipping it or you wanted to pick it up, that's okay. fine. That's all included. Awesome. A couple other shout outs. Ricardo, good evening from London. Awesome. Percy, longtime channel community member there ttk tkk sorry another fellow youtuber welcome all my friends um i did post this in the comments as well julius is asking is there a web page it's basically buckiams.com um check it out definitely as we're talking i thought about maybe pulling it up as we were chatting as well but then that kind of becomes the focal point so i'd encourage folks you know pull it up while while we're while you're listening um Richard Erickson. Hello. First time here. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Kevin, he, he's a channel regular. So he's not what, not what you expected. I guess our Midwesterners have a, <laughs> that's good. He's a PhD. <clears throat> um, so here we go. This is, I think this will be a fun one to get into. Um, yeah. 314 Carpenter. Notice it in your background. You got some speakers in there. Um, some questions. So what do you run in your theater? I so this is room. my living room. It's been my theater living room. Um, these are actually just golden ears behind me because oh, nice. uh, originally when I built this, I live in kind of a condo I built on my own. Um, I have a nice property back here. Originally when I built it, I did just in walls behind me because um, I don't have a wall to this side. So I, I when I built this room, I put in in ceilings and in walls for a 5.1.4. But since I didn't have the side wall here, I was forced to do two back in walls. And then about a year ago, I was like, well, I want, I have room behind me to do obviously on walls. And then if I put up kind of a little lampshade, you can see right there that holds one of the golden ears and I have the other one on the wall there, I can do seven surround. So these, the golden ears, it's 
they're great for just the surround effects. Um, like I said, this room isn't anything to, to talk about much more. It used to be, um, I, at one point I had pair the, the revel beryllium's in here uh, and a funk 21 subwoofer, um, case the kaleidoscape and a trinov. And then I actually, last year when I decided I want to start it off and purify, I knew there was going to be quite a bit I had to invest to get it going. Yeah. And I didn't want to take out a business loan to be dragged down by that. So I sold all those fun toys. Oh, and okay. Wow. Now my setup in here, it's, it's great for the small little room. Um, it's paradigms up front a rhythmic 18 or 15 sub, no 18. Um, no 15. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm looking at it. Um, so it's a great little setup, but what I am working on, um, and I actually made a build thread on AVS if people want to go to their theater build um, is an actual theater. So there's a room I'm, I can actually show you guys right there. If you want to see that door, we just, I put that in today. I set the paint and everything that goes to the new room I'm building to the side here. Um, we have it all framed next will be kind of some work for the floor and then drive blah, blah, blah. Either way, that room is going to be JVC projector. Um, the NZ NZ seven, 160 inch, 16 by nine screen. Um, I have two, uh, rhythmic 18s that I got. And by the way, all this I got used just kind of sniping prices. So uh, was saved me a lot of money. Um, I'm doing JBL Cinema up front. They're C211. So they're meant for a smaller cinema setup. Um, they're Studio 6 in walls to keep compression drivers for uh, side and back surrounds. And then some Klipsch LCR. Um, they're RPC line. They're Pro 180. Uh, in walls to do six atmos running off it'll be run off an anthem avm 70 um yep yeah no that thing has been great like even after i sold the trend off i went with the avm 70 and i don't have any complaints um sounds great the anthem works well easy to use so i'll be running off that and obviously some of my amps and then another kaleidoscape setup so when that room's done um that'll be the fun room again um i had a theater years ago for a couple of years, but that was back again when, when I did this hobby, I was probably spending money on brand names rather than performance. Cause we all kind of maybe start <laughs> off there. Yeah. So now I'm doing it where the money's going to performance and mainly saving a lot. Like those JBL cinemas, I got the three of them used in perfect condition for $900 plus 300 freight shipping. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm excited to try them out. I used to, I've used JBL cinemas in, in my old theater. Love the sound. So uh, yeah, that's going to be the, the room and the room, sorry, is going to be four. It's 14 by 24. Okay. Um, so I have two rows of seating. So yeah, that will be my, when you ask what my setup is the one I have now, not too impressive anymore. The one I'm working on, that will be the good one. That'll be the fun one. That you'll be back. Yep. Yeah. And then I, I was reminded, uh, that the JVC projector does have 3D, so I am. Mm. I do look forward to watching the original Avatar in 3D again. That that was always my favorite. I remember going to the cinema for that, and it's always kind of my favorite. Can't wait to kind of get that effect again. I want to say that number two, number two is getting a 3D. Release. Yeah, I saw that. I actually, I still haven't seen it yet, but I'm sure it's just as good for the 3D and all that. Mm. So, yep. Couple more questions. Uh, Kevin is asking, "What about what about Pascal modules?" So, Hypex and Purify is, is is what I see the most when it comes to I would say more premium class D amps. Like you mentioned, Ice Powers, Pascals. There's other modules out there, yeah. right? So there there are other modules. Um, Pascal. I briefly tried a company that used them. I just wasn't. They have tons of power. But I don't know. It, again, it was just one of those things where I can't say they sounded different or sounded worse. It just it didn't fit for me. Um, it, it to me they're they're great. It's for if you're doing your own, you know, you want to build power speakers or especially subs. You can't go wrong with them because you're going to get a lot of power. Um, but no, I don't have plans at this moment to add them to the lineup. All right. A few other shout outs, Oprah Winfrey, Channel Regular, and Cherubin as well. Welcome to all the folks. All right. So here, is there an analog? Is there an analog for balanced differential topology with Purify or Hypex? Analog or balanced differential topology. I think that meant an or instead of a four. 
Yeah. So I, I'm, I guess, I don't know if you're asking if you can do analog, like, um, and again, an unbalanced type, uh, like left, right RCA to the amp and, and have it balanced or I don't, all I can say is, um, the topology is balanced. Um, it's, it's a balanced differential, the purify and the hypex internally. But then as I kind of talked about earlier, if you're going from an unbalanced source to the amp, you're obviously going to be, if you use the RCA XLR cable, you're going to be trying, you're going to be maintaining most of just in layman's terms, most of that balanced topology, the uh, performance there. Um, that's why, again, Hypex recommends that rather than RCA to RCA. Oh, balanced differential. Yeah. So the, like, for instance, the Purify is fully um, balanced differential internally. see a couple other comments so darren doc been looking at your amps awesome if you have any questions definitely um drop them in the chat other folks giving props um to, to these hypex modules um flyers likes his nc252 percy's got his nc502 any fine i mean what would you say is the the finer detail between those modules is it really just a matter of of power or is there some other type of quality difference as well so the 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 NC five it's it's mainly power. So the NC five hundred two has, um, depending on like if you look at the Amir's reviews on ASR, um, the NC five zero two has maybe three to four decibel better for distortion. Um, again, we're at levels where it's pretty much inaudible, anyways. Uh, well, right about it at that threshold, but that's also because it has more power. So um, with that power, you kind of um, you get that a little bit better with the distortion, but by and large sound wise, and this is why I get asked a lot, you know, wh which one sound, or I guess the, which one do they sound the same or the sound character characteristics, the same stuff like that. I, exactly a hundred percent the same in terms of how they sound, uh, how they're implemented between the 502 and the 252. Everything's the same um, except, that power. And with that comes with the 502, you're going to get a little more heat output. Um, if you leave it on all the time, the 502, you'll get more uh, standby wattage usage, which can be up to about 15 watts, whereas the 252 is around seven. So that's a consideration for some people if they leave it on all the time. Um, but in terms of how it sounds, how it performs, pretty much identical. Um, and, and that's one thing you're going to get from me. I, I still have some people kind of ask me, you know, I just had someone ask if they could try the NCX and the Purify at the same time to determine mm -hmm. which one sounds better for them and which one has, uh, you know, better bass control, stuff like that. And I have to, I'm the type of person, they're the same. Um, you can put them together. And if you did a blind, actual blind AB, they're going to sound the same um, unless there's something wrong with one or the other. Um, all of them between the, the, <laughs> the Encore, the Encore X and the Purify, uh, will handle bass great. Um, they're flat down to 20 hertz minimum. So for speakers, and I have to stress this again, these are meant for speakers. I've had some people, you can use them for subs. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I do have some people every now and then say, hey, I want a thousand watts to do a passive sub. The best one there is the NC502 bridge. Um, hmm. But then I also remind people, that's why I say like there's Pascal or there's um you know certain ice powers where those are a little better tailored to for that application i i would never i would never tell someone to spend the money on a purify module to run a, a sub that just kind of is a waste to be like well you can okay. get a little more power for you're not going to hear distortion at that level you're running a sub yeah. um but i still do get people ask me that so yeah if or if you're running full range um speakers you don't have to worry again these these aren't going to cut the bass out. You're not going to have weak bass. Uh, the idea here is these are all designed to be complete. That And another thing to touch on, these are all designed to be completely transparent. So if you notice some, some competitors or manufacturers will offer different, what we call OP amps or buffers, mm -hmm. like the Purify builds or the new, um, even in Core X. Um, the only thing those will really add, and this has been shown in measurements, is possibly distortion. Okay. Uh, which can make the sound different. So yeah. there's one company that offers basically a tube um, buffer stage 
to make the class D amp that this purify technology that was designed to be completely transparent, not affect the sound. Well, now they introduce this buffer that purposely affects the sound. So it's kind of like, I don't do that. My, my goal is these amps were made to just pass your music along or pass your sound along amplified without um, any coloration. Yeah, um, you're pretty and that can be kind of a pushback. There are some people who uh, want or there are some people who will switch to this after years of maybe a tube or something they're used to. And at first it might sound, it's kind of like when you switch from, if you had, you know, $20 bookshelf speakers and you finally get your first high end set up and all of a sudden you think your music sounds crappy because you're hearing things you didn't hear. That's kind mm -hmm. of what I have to remind people is these amps, they're just very transparent. You're going to hear everything. So yeah. um, I see more. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll get those in a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in my, in my case, I I would definitely be looking to run so I would subwoofers on on whatever whatever the purchase is, and, and that's even what I mean. Triad these triad rack amps I have, they're I mean the subs are ten inch in wall, so they're not like we're pushing right. eighteen or twenty one, um, you know, in a box or something. But the triad only runs them on three hundred and fifty watt, I think. So I've oh, already, yeah, already yeah, you and I more, talk, more yeah. So it kind of just depends on on what you're on what you're driving with them um so one of the things I, I think that's we're talking a little bit more about too is the idea of like kind of mixing mixing the modules right in a home theater application so if if maybe um eventually you've got the three channel ncx yeah. on the way but then you step down to a 502 or a 252 in an eight channel or or something like that's 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 still a, a, a solid match. Um, but I, I noticed like on some of the amps, you have adjustable gains, I think. And on some of the yeah. larger channel configurations, either they're not, either the gains not on the back or is it internal and jumpers or what, what's the integration schema, I guess, to take a three channel NCX and put it together with an eight channel 252. And what do you have to do to, to, to run that properly? So the, um, the Purify and the NCX are the only ones with the gain. The, okay. the hype, the NC252 and 502, they are an all-in-one module. So their gain okay. is set. Um, the only way to change the gain, no one, no, no, if you look anywhere, no one offers gain options or buffer options for those because everything is set on the PCB board that you would have to desolder a bunch of resistors. Okay. But for matching, so if you look, like when we did the purify for our buffer board, we tried to set um, the gain stage so that the high gain closely matches between the NC252 and the 502. Okay. Um, so you, well, so I'm sorry, so that the the gain is the same. So I think the, NC, the 252 and the 502 are like 26.5 decibel. And I think high, if you use the high gain setting on our um, purify, it's, I want to say we it's right around there. I think 26, maybe 25. So we the gain setting on that is meant to kind of match. If you're integrating, you can use the purify for the front, use the high gain setting, and it'll closely match a 252 or a 502. And then you run your room correction. And you'll be within a, you know, if everything else was equal distance, blah, 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 you'd be within about a decibel or so. Okay. Um, for the NCX, it's a little harder because um, it requires more voltage to get a higher gain out of them if we use our buffer. So if people are ma mixing and matching an NCX and the 252 or 502, that's where I tell them, use the um, the stock, the onboard NCX buffer, not our Buckeye buffer, um, which means you don't have any control over the gain with the switches. The switches don't oh, do anything okay. in the back. Only for but it side. does match up again with the 252 and the 502. So we have... We have it set up so you can mix and match these and the gains will all be the um, either exactly the same or about one decibel plus or minus. And choosing the input stage is an internal configuration. So when somebody's ordering, I guess they, they would know what, what they're, they would be working with you. They would know the entirety yeah. of the system, what the whole order is, and you would get it all, all configured yeah. to, to integrate. Perfect. Yeah, that's why I said. I'm always here for questions. So when if people... I get that a lot is, you know, I want to mix and match these. What's the best gains there? Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I'm always, always ready to answer in the emails and help out. Perfect. So we'll go through some more questions here. If, if you have questions, um, shoot them out. If you'd like to attach a super chat or a super thanks, it's, it is always appreciated. 
um, Truben asking um, asking about monolith. So monolith does eight by two hundred watts in class D with a five hundred two um, with two power cables, but that's a five hundred two, right? That's not the NCX or the or the purified. No, yeah, so that's that's the same as our eight channel um, five hundred two modules. The modules are exactly the same. The difference is, um, you know, what options do they offer versus like what options can you build in with the buffer, the input board, um, such as auto sends, trigger, um, clipping, reporting, like we have on ours. So ours, we also, and this kind of gets into the power. I think I know where this question is going. We use two power cables too for our eight channel five zero two. I did that because it helps internal wiring to have for the theoretical max. If you take an NC two five two module the theoretical max that that module could pull is a thousand watts for over the two channels. Mm -hmm. um, Cause 500 watts, four ohms. So you got a thousand. So technically the theoretical max of eight of total channels of five zero two. And again, this is theoretical. If you're playing pure sine wave, maxing it out would be 4,000 watts total, but we know that it's not going to draw that. Um, so I, but I, it's just kind of, in terms of safety, especially working with electricity, it just makes sense to have those two power cords just for, again, I can split the internal wiring easier. So it's not all running off uh, one connector on the IEC, but you can absolutely run both those power cords on the same dedicated circuit in a house. Um, and this brings up kind of a broader thing that I get a lot of people ask is, you know, do I need a de two dedicated circuits or do I need no, you can run that eight channel 502. In fact, in my setup, I have an eight channel 502. I have a six channel 252. Um, I had my funk audio at one point, which was technically 4,400 watts peak and my 85 inch LED TV all on a 15 amp circuit. And again, I listen at pure reference and I never had an issue. And that comes back to A, the, the efficiency of class D and B, when you're watching a movie, you're not, even if you hit, you know, let's say your front left and right speaker hit the max of a 502 and pull a thousand watts, that's for what, maybe a, a second, half a second. And your, your normal household wiring, a 15 amp circuit is meant to hold almost double that for a rated time. So it's, you got a margin of play and you have to really have a lot running. Um, you have to play a pure sine wave in all those channels to really even dim the lights basically. Um, so no, again, both of ours use double power cords, but you can absolutely run a, um, run them off one outlet, one circuit. Don't need to worry about that. Perfect. Uh, let's see. Kevin was asking um, a packaging question, uh, speaker terminals above the XLRs. Is there, a, is there a packaging reason? So that's because if you look at our input board, um, the input board where all the XR goes into, where, where the modules connect, um, we want to place that low and towards the bottom of the case. Uh, a, just because it's easier to place it down there than have it higher up. Um, and B, it allows us to use small standoffs. So you'll notice some people on any electronics, um, when people use chassis connectors with a board, a lot of people will just like those XLRs we use have little screws that hold the XLRs to the chassis. And a lot of people that have a similar board than ours will just use those to support the board. So basically your XR connectors are holding the board to the chassis. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of hard to visualize if you, but we like to put the board low or I did that. So I, our cases have little standoffs that go from the case to the bottom of the PCB board at the back. So it never flexes over time. Um, okay. A lot of things you'll get with people that when, when you use a PCB mounted RCA or XLR connection, like we use, if you don't support the board also, and you just have the connector supporting to the chassis, after years of use, you can get it where it starts to kind of, the weight of the board can slowly kind of bend and you might get a connection that comes loose or a solder that comes off. So we like said, we put our board low, so it's easier to screw to the chassis and have kind of more of a um, better grounding and more stability long-term. Nice, perfect engineering reasons. <laughs> Um, John Gonzalez, any chance for a three or five? So, I mean, you have them. <laughs> um, well, so I, I, this one, I think what he means is our, we have three channel for like the Purify or the NCOR X for the NC2552. 
two for the two five two five zero two. Those are only even channels because the two five two five zero two come in stereo configuration. Each module is two channels. Oh, Hypex okay. does make the equivalent module in a single channel, um, but to carry that would cut into the inventory and purchasing power of the stereo modules. So I actually the purchasing price for the amount of the that I can purchase at a time for the stereo modules brings those prices down to where they're almost the same as a, a mono module. So essentially a six channel that I offer and say the six channel NC252 is nearly the same price as what I could offer a five channel as. So it's just easier to say there's no issue leaving a channel unused. Um, I know OCD wise, like even myself would say, <laughs> I have this channel sitting there that's not doing anything. It won't harm performance. And in fact, it'll be a little less heat output anyways, because that channel's not running. It, it's just, it's easier to offer that um, than carry even more module stock and kind of cut into the pricing I can get for the other ones. Got it. All right. So Julius is asking, what would you classify your amp sound signature as? Neutral. Again, when I brought up transparent, um, the Purify, the, the Hypex and Purify design these to do nothing to the sound other than amplify it. I know it sounds dumb that Purify, like what they say is, um, it's a amplification wire. Basically it's a straight wire from your source to your speakers. Um, that's what it is. It's you're passing your audio in. So whatever the recording is supposed to sound like is being passed out of the amplifier the same. There's no coloring. There's no changing of, uh, the frequency response or anything like that. Perfect. Um, true. again, um, uh, Amir from ASR loves to measure class D for sign of measurements. But many, many people have a mindset about class D sound base and fullness, meaning some people feel it's lacking. I guess we touched on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's again, all the, the, it's kind of carried on because class D had a rocky start and originally was confined to, um, <laughs> which is weird. The, the bass thing is weird to me because class D was originally confined to car audio where people use them for bass subwoofers all the time. Yeah. Um, but it, they did in the home theater market, the original class D did not sound great and it had its kind of ups and downs, but no, it, you can take any of my amps and you could run your speakers full range. You know, you're not going to, it's not going to cut the bass out. It's not going to affect it negatively. Got it. So another configuration question, unfinished business. Welcome. Can you make an all in one 11 power, 11 channel power amp? I can, but the case size is going to be more than uh, what would normally fit. I can, yes, but you're going to be in a case that um, I don't know where you're going to fit it. So, like my eight channel five zero two, the case had we had a, we put the modules vertically to fit eight channels into a seventeen inch. I try and keep everything at seventeen inches wide. One reason is if people have a rack shelf, seventeen mm -hmm. inches is your max. Yeah. Um, the other is a lot of just your normal, you know, I have a um, salamander, just a kind of their lower end cabinet up front and, and 18, 19 inches is kind of pushing it width wise. So I I've always try to say it's 17, but I mean, I could do 11 channels, but you're in a case that's probably going to be 22, 23 inches wide. And so you're in the territory of like, that's, that's a lot more. It's harder to fit than if you just did yeah. two, six channels and even stacked them. Right. Yep. Yeah. At that point, just go multiple chassis. Yeah. <clears throat> or do the three and eight. I really, I really would think in most cases, like three and eight is a superior, um, an overall superior solution. I just did yeah. a, um, I just did a video, um, I mean, about a week and a half ago, talking a little bit about this because in some of the consulting sessions I've been doing, um, there's been like a lot of chatter about, well, separates or, you know, adding amplifiers and what would folks add? And like, you know, really, if, if you're coming from a receiver and you're starting to consider adding something external, it's like getting getting your mains, getting those LCRs for home theater or, you know, if, if stereo mains, whatever, if you got a phantom center like I do. But m moving those off first, um, you know, th they do different work in a home theater system than, than the rest of the channels do. So rather than trying to shoehorn too much stuff into one box like that, putting a little... But biasing a little uh, more strength into three and then putting the other eight together. Like to me that there's a, there's a really nice balance there. 
Oh, I, yeah, I, I agree. Especially again, if you're, if you're not ready for a processor and all separate, the, the most common, someone with a receiver that wants to get their feet into separates, but not change all over completely is offloading that front three to a, a amplifier because then you free up, as most of us know, there, your normal receiver ratings, they rate them at two channels. Here's your power output. As soon as you mm-hmm. add three or more channels, that power supply is now being, um, it doesn't just cut it. It's not like it's a, um, a normal, like, oh, you're going to certain percentage for each channel added. As soon as you add three or four channels on that receiver, you're losing power by a lot per channel. Yeah. So you offload the three speakers that are doing 90% of the work and the rest of your, your speakers are pretty much good. Open it up. Yeah. Uh, and the channel counts work that way as well, because you could do, you know, if you've got 11 channels, eight plus three, if you've got um, you know, six overheads or six surrounds or wides or something, you got 15, uh, six plus six plus three still doesn't waste any amps. And you, yeah. you're, you're amplifying your whole system in three boxes in a nice balanced way. Uh, another one from from Kevin. My final question is: Buckeye, the emotive of the future, <laughs> started with amps and move on. He must have missed your your early tease. <laughs> I wouldn't say uh, uh, speakers. I can say I, I, that's a game I know I won't be getting into. But um, I can't say emotive specifically. But we're we're not just going to be sticking to pure amplifiers. Um, I did tease it at the beginning that, um, and I I'm going to find a good time to. Again, maybe if I come on when it's ready yeah. and show it, but we have yeah. a product that we're working on that's going to uh, bridge the gap that a lot of people can use, and that's um, more than just an amplifier. And uh, I think once that comes out, people will see that we're the Buckeyes here for the long haul. That's not just building these simple, you know, put together these amps and ship them out in a box. So, um, no to speakers, I can say that definitely. Processors, I mean, even that's kind of a different market, but um, more than just amps, yes. Yeah, I mean, when you you've got a good, you've got a great business on a great trajectory, you know, sky sky's the limit, uh, always on the future, right? But um, just making sure not to go too too fast, too quick. Yeah. Like yeah. that's what I've learned. Again, I'm trying not to take out business loans and keep the business growing the right way. Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah. I'm all on board. I'm all on board with that. Keep it organic and, and keep it in a way that you, you know, you, you can, you can manage it, but you can, you can push your boundaries and challenge yourself, but right in an intelligent way. Absolutely. Um, unfinished business. Does class D give the dynamics in home theater in, uh, in home theater is class a B better. I think I, again, dynamic, I kind of touched on this. No issue with dynamics. Um, there's even you actually can get people to say when they listen to home theater again i don't get into the very subjective but i've had a lot of people say that when they crank it up they switch to a class d and they go watch their favorite movies and stuff again the dynamics seem even um uh, not the word better isn't there that they use but it's more pronounced um that it got that they can notice it uh Mm -hmm. never have i had someone say oh all of a sudden everything just sounds i think the word that comes to mind when people think of that is flat, that class D might have a flat sound. When I say it's transparent and then, and it's neutral, a lot of people consider that flat. And I don't know. um, I I guess maybe they picture, you know, if you have this dynamic soundtrack and you put it in as class D amp and all of a sudden it's just a flat frequency response. When I say the frequency response is flat, it's not changing it in any way, but if you're passing on, you know, this much x decibels at 60 um hertz and then the soundtrack has this at one to, like it's the class d amp is not going to flatten it all out and now it just sounds like nothing right. um, like so whatever you pass in is going to get amplified and passed out the way it should right Cl- cleanliness and clarity yeah definitely something that i think that i i hold up um as a ver- as a virtue uh for, for gear choices and all of that in this hobby um yeah, as a as an engineering goal, that's one of the reasons I like the anthem so much. I def I, I feel like I I heard something when I made my Morans to anthem change um, that I wasn't hearing before, and that was even before running arc and all of that stuff. So 
I'm, I'm really curious to, I, I, ha I haven't had an amplifier of this like technology in my system yet. I, I had the Emotivas and then now we've been the Parasons for a while, but I'm really eager to, I'm really eager to try um, and just see, see, see what I notice, right? See, right. see what's what with. Uh... No, no shameless plugs of the Anthem here. Like I said, I, I'm a user and I love it. Um, with, there's the, if you're looking for uh, a <laughs> processor, that 70 AVM 70, I, I can't give it more praise than it has. Um, I won't talk. I've had other ones. I had one that was popular for a while and then people started having problems with it recently. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the 70 has been rock solid. Never, not a single issue so far. Yeah. That's a tough class of device in our hobby to get right. Just because there's so much going on with oh, it. Yeah. Well, and, um, and especially with uh, the, I use my Xbox series X. So I'm one of the ones that I know in the forums, you'll say, well, I really want something that's stable with, you know, 4k 120 or even eARC. And I don't use eARC anymore because of how I switch things up. But the Anthem has never had an issue when I throw on my Xbox with mm. doing the, um, passing along VRR, ALM, all those nice little features. Like it's been perfect. The 8K version. So when people, yeah. if you're looking the 8K AVM 70 version, but yeah. yeah and those are things that other competitors, like they haven't gotten right yet. So what do you, what do you use your system for the most? What, what, uh, what kind of content, what elements of home theater do you enjoy? So, um, I love gaming has always been there for me, but I haven't had as much time as I'd liked. So <laughs> yep. uh, when I can sit down and, okay, when the theater's done and I have a dedicated spot, I mean, it. I'm instantly going back to all my, my favorites are your long, awesome movie, like the Snyder cut mm. for Justice League. I love that. The, the extended version of Lord of the Rings. I love the movies where, when you can finally sit back and just get immersed, um, so that, that genre can kind of jump a little bit, but mostly like uh, action, um, even over the top. I mean, uh, my guilty pleasure is Pacific Rim. If okay, you just yep. want a movie to, yep. you want to throw it on, you want to watch some robots battle some monsters with a lot of bass, great. Yeah. Um, you don't even need a plot, just put it on. <laughs> yeah, right. um, but yeah, that's my usage is what's going to get get the most fun or the most immersion, one or the other. Yeah, I'm um, a big fan of the of like the kaiju stuff as well. I, I've, yeah. I've, I've done both of the Pacific Rims. I'm not up on all the the latest MonsterVerse Godzillas though. I need to catch up. Catch up I, on those. Those again. Those were fun. I I liked the reboot Godzilla. So then I finally watched um, the next one. I forget the name of it before the Kong. And those are again just ones you you get to put on and you just enjoy them. Um, yeah. My sleeper hit for people, uh, and it has good base moments, but. To me, it's I'm I also like disaster movies. Uh, mm. So Greenland was a movie I wasn't expecting. That's really good. It has Gerard Butler in it. Um, has some really good scenes. But again, my popcorn movies like I put on um, Moonfall, mm. and it's like, all right, here's here's there another Earth ending, you know, 2012 type movie, and you just put it on and you let your speakers and sub do all the work, and you just enjoy yeah. it. Take the ride. Yep. Yeah. We got some similar tastes for sure. <clears throat> what do you think has been like, um, maybe say the biggest challenge that you've overcome in the whole business endeavor and put, putting this whole thing together? Um, I think it's, I don't want to say like setbacks or deadlines. It's more just keeping things streamlined again, single owner operator um there's plus and minuses to it mm. i actually and people I mean I, like if i wasn't doing this right now i probably would still be building amps right now and i just kind of keep working because i get to one thing i like is i get to put these movies on that i kind of enjoy or these tv series and work while i build mm. um but there are when something comes up it is a little harder to all right keep orders going but i got to fix this problem for someone or um, help someone troubleshoot. I don't mind it at all. It doesn't bother me, but it is kind of the hardest to do is juggling a few different roles. Mm, um, yep. But so far it hasn't gotten, I mean, I haven't had a nervous breakdown. Um, <laughs> I haven't wanted to quit. I just, like I said, cause you seem pretty passionate about the whole thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love it. And again, it's, 
uh, hey, what new series is on? I'm gonna put that on in the background and build some amps. Like it's not like, oh man, I gotta, I'm I'm spoiled that way. So part of it is um, why I'm not gouging people for money like maybe some other competitors is because I I do like what I do because I get to get up, you know, um, I'll answer emails, talk to customers, and then usually just put something nice on or kind of put some music on and just start building amps and. I don't have to worry about some of the other stuff that a nine to five job brings. Um, when you, I know people say all the time, but when you like what you do, it technically isn't work. I mean, it's work, but it's yeah. fun. So yep. yeah, it's rewarding. For yeah. Sure. So part and parcel with that. One of the things that I've actually probably been doing the, the, the YouTube thing almost as long, like you know, early 2020 ish, mid 2020 ish. And like, I found doing that. I still have my day job and all that stuff. And, and this has been a, a separate endeavor for me, but like it's been a growth experience in so many like different ways. It's, it's shattered levels of introversion that I used to have. Um, and, and just like the, the stuff that I make now is like so different than the stuff I made two years ago. Um, a lot of things have kind of like rubbed off on my kids and all that personal growth. What do you, what do you think has been, um, or any ma major aspects of like personal growth and development, like positive takeaways that you've had from the experience of, of the last few years of, of building Buckeye. Um, I kind of that introverted thing. Uh, cause even when, when I'm in, like when I was doing my PhD in my lab, like I'm open around my friends, I'm open around people I know, but I've always been, um, and maybe it's that millennial thing of like, I don't want to talk on the phone or I don't just text message me, you know, email me. Um, but this, this right away, like I never had an issue emailing customers, um, but it kind of got me into the habit of just talking, like being more open to people I don't know. And just, mm -hmm. there is time. I think I had a customer. It was two uh, a year and a half ago. Um, I ended up, I was on the phone with him for an hour or so because I know from this hobby, when I first started it, that when I would go to the store near me, like the boutique store, it was fun to go in and talk to the salesman and kind of just talk about the hobby and things. Mm -hmm. And now I'm that person where, I've had customers keep me on the phone. They just talk and they want to talk about it. And it's like, it doesn't bother me. It's like, all right, yeah, I'll talk to this person. It's, it's kind of me being open to people I don't know. And it's, it's nice kind of finally breaking that, um, getting more comfortable with that. Um, and reminding me that, and it keeps me humble because it reminds me that, well, yeah, I'm, these are the people that I'm trying to satisfy and that I'm trying to uh, do all this work for that. I'm not just sitting here, you know, closed off, not interacting with anyone other than through a keyboard and making these things for money. Like, yeah, getting out the. That's why I'm uh, again trying to go to even conventions and meet. No, that's get perfect. out there more and meet people. Yeah, yeah. This our, this hobby is very um, isolationist in a way. I guess right. I, I, did, I did a poll some while back, which basically was you know how do you how do you enjoy your home theater hobby more or less? Right? Do you enjoy it by yourself? Do you do it with a spouse? Do you do it with a family? Do you do it with friends? And like 70% was by myself. Yeah. And so, you know, just by virtue of, of things like this, you know, a, a lot of us build communities on forums, but um, doing, doing the channel and, and like the exposure to, to folks and making friends and getting out and meeting, and meeting people and, and just sharing more actively, like I said, not just through the computer. This is still through the computer, but it's, it's a different way. We've got a bunch right. of people here hanging out, chatting, you know, and just, uh, yeah, having, having fun. It changes the whole endeavor, I think. All right. A couple more questions and then we probably can work our way towards a wrap up. If you have any more, uh, thoughts, comments, suggestions, questions, I, um, go ahead and put them in the chat now. Um, unfinished business. Just want to hit this one. An XPA 11 is 19 inch wide. I think the thing you got to take account is that it's 19 inches with the rack gears. So it's a 17 inch amp but it's 19 inches to fit a 19 inch rack. Right. And yeah. And that's a different technology. So they're, they're cards. Like if you look at an XPA, they're, they're slot cards basically. But like when you get down, you can't do a full 11 channel amp of theirs at the high power. Um, yeah. You get like, I think you do max three or five and then you get those really tiny stereo yep. uh, cards. So again, different. And that's, not the same class D that we're talking about at all anyway. So yeah, actually that I had that, that was one of the amps that I had. Um, actually I went through two, two rounds of Emotiva cause I had, I think gen twos, I had a three 
three of five and a five. And then in my infinite wisdom, probably one of the dumbest downgrades that I side grades that I ever took in my home theater. I, I decided to, to do the one box. I, I found the value in trying to get to one box. I did the, I did that 11 uh -huh. and then from there. There I went to the pair of sounds, but. A um, couple other comments, CB Moore. Nice to see manufacturer committed to the customer. Um, that's great. Um, love to get both your takes on, on D versus AB sub. So we've been talking about this through. Um, if you've joined us late, you, it might be valuable to, to rewind um, back to the beginning a bit. One of the things that I'm looking forward to is, is again, making this change kind of in my own setup um, relative to the pair of sounds and seeing what I see here and seeing what I, seeing what I hear. Um, obviously you've, <clears throat> by virtue of, of your product offerings, what you've chose to build with in your roadmap, you've got your, your preference still. And just speaking for subs, you don't have to take it from me. Like power sound audio is one of the, the huge form, like one of those subs you go to or rhythmic rhythmic subs use Hypex class D amplifiers. Power sound uses ice power class D and those are some of the, you're, the, well, you think about it this way, like you're not going to put like funk audio, 4,400 watts peak audio. You're not going to use a class AB amp <laughs> to do a sub. That's going to be so heavy. And, but <clears throat> funk audio is some of the best sounding subs there are, people will tell you. So obviously there's no issue using class D for those. So I think, I think just the manufacturers who use them and have gotten praise and how much they're, People say, hey, get these subs shows that class D is it's perfectly fine for for that use. Yeah, for that load. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, anything else that you want to you want people to know or to, to leave with? Um, um, no, just I'm always like I said, you, my emails out there uh, on the website, contact forums, any way you want to. If anyone has questions, um, even if you're not sure if you're ready to buy it, I'm always here and around. Um, and hopefully get the final details of what we're working on. Kind of uh, I've been sitting on like even a picture I wanted to put out that would almost spill the beans, but it's like, I want to kind of get a little more yeah. ready, um, but I'm excited for it. Um, and again, I know a lot of people, it's something that a lot of people have expressed interest in that uh, found the right person that has helped me along the way to, to get all this going the way the direction we I've wanted and he's helped me kind of also. Um, but that's about, yeah. I mean, we have, so we have more coming up. Um, we're not just sitting still and, you know, putting out the same stuff. Uh, but yeah, I always like to tell people anything you need to ever need to ask or just um, even if you want to shoot me an email, that's, you know, three paragraphs long of what your setup is. And then at the very end say, so what would you recommend? Perfectly fine. I can help you with that too. I've had some of those and I don't mind them. I like hearing about other people's setups and how I might be able to help. Perfect. All right. We'll hit these last couple of questions and then we'll call it a night. Um, CB Moore says, went to school in Ohio. What's the connection with the name? Um, so I didn't go to Ohio State University, but my pretty much most of my family, my brother went and graduated there and most of my family are Buckeye fans. So it just felt fitting. I live in Ohio. Um, and what would be a good name for an amplifier company in Ohio would be Buckeye Amps. There you go. Uh, Supernova more is that wondering if we have a Memorial Day sale coming up. You've got some discounts actually on the page right now, I think. Is that right? Yeah. So I just had a spring sale for both Purify uh, and Hypex. Um, and part of that was the MSRP prices actually from what they were a couple months ago are now considerably lower for most of my amps. Um, so I don't foresee a Memorial Day sale since I have brought the overall prices down anyways. Um, but there is always, you know, maybe... Uh, see what happens, you know, 4th of July or maybe Labor Day kind of in there. Perfect. Yeah, so Chris was wondering, he, he's taking a guess on the new one. We won't spill any beans, integrated amp. Um, all right, so Truben, one more question here. Ever considered an exotic variant? So there we go. Talked a little bit about the two buffer input or some, some other options. I, no, um, and the same with why I don't, uh, when we made our buffer board, we just went with, um, the 16, the OPA 1612 for the OP amp and it's soldered on that you, some other people allow you to change them. Even, um, we went with what matches the best to the purify reference board because 
again, our idea is these are, these are made to be neutral, to not change the sound, not do anything um, past what was man engineered for these. So um, that's what I'm offering to the customers. So maybe briefly thought about it, but at this point, not something we're looking into offering. Um, and I'm upfront about that. If people ask me, Hey, I want to buy your amp, but can I change the, you know, they call them roll their own OP amp so they can change them out. I tell them that's not for us. I mean, if, if there's other people that offer it and I no hard feelings, if that's where you want to go. Perfect. All right. I think, uh, hour and a half. This has been really awesome. I, uh, yeah, I've, I've learned, <laughs> learned quite a bit again. Um, really appreciate you having on. I got to make my decision now. What, uh, what, what do we want to do? Do I want to se segue in with a four channel probably for the living room? We'll get that all confirmed up offline and yeah, no, I'm yep. See what happens. And yeah, like I said, uh, I'll be touching base. So maybe it sounds like next time, once I have all the details, of this new product, that'd be a good time to maybe go over it and I can touch base offline with you and kind of go from there. Perfect. All right. So thanks so much everyone for joining tonight. Yep. Um, look for, uh, you know, more, more videos coming usual Monday, Friday cadence. I don't know if I'll do another just uh solo live stream this weekend. We've got a soccer tournament and some other things going on, but TBD, but in any case, there will be, regular more and regular tech enthusiasm content coming we just had a bunch of awesome new movies hit as well john wick four it's um so we got some got some movie watching to do <clears throat> all right thanks so much everybody and have a have a great night yep thanks everybody